Okay. Town clerk, you must be a virginious in the pledge to say that? Oh, badly. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Deputy Supervisor Moldova. Heavenly Father, bless this assemblage. Grant us the wisdom to make our every decision fair-minded and in the best interest for all its residents. Thank you. Okay. Hey, hey. I have a motion to bring the meeting to order. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Okay. So um, we're going to have a couple of presentations tonight. So we're going to start off. We're starting off with the presentations. Is that the uh, design? Yes, yeah, Okay, perfect. So, Mr. Markowitz, is all over to you. Sorry. There you go. This is the one uh, you got on, right? Yes. That's exactly what I said you yeah, okay. with yeah. the couple of right. updates. Okay. okay. Um, yes, thank you. Sorry, um, tonight we're going to talk about uh, activities in the town of Rye and particularly talk about real property assessment activities. A um, couple of things I'm going to talk about this evening. Um, it's sort of the trends in town assessments town-wide. Uh, discuss a little bit about board of review complaints and how we've experienced them. Uh, talk specifically about uh, search. Oh, okay. I'm just moving this over here. Oh, that's a good video. Everybody got to watch. Okay, are we okay there, man? Isn't that important? Yeah, isn't that interesting? <laughs> oh, did you check that? I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about why social is so important to the town and its taxpayers and its residents, some of the implications in terms of uh, real estate property taxes that result from social cases, and with some recommendations to enhance um, the process, to speed up the process, to make the process more even, more fair-handed, and to, to have better results. And then finally, we're going to talk a little bit about what drives everything. Um, let me start with, if we can go to the next slide, Greg, uh, the trends in assessments townwide. If you look at the, the chart, you can see in the first year, in 2004, the town's aggregate assessed valuation, taxable valuation, was $6.71 billion. Um, as we annually updated assessments, the assessments peaked in 2007 at about $7.79 billion. 
So that's the first three years of the reevaluation. And in each of the subsequent five years, the town's assessed value has declined to the point where in 2012, the town's assessed value was $6.14 billion, which is actually less than 2004 when we first did reevaluation townwide. So it peaked many years ago. It's declined each and every year for the last five or six years. We have followed market trends. Moving on to the next slide, Greg. This is a chart showing the number of challenges to the Board of Assessment Review. As you can see, the, the blue and the red combined are total challenges, and they move around yearly from a peak of a little bit over 1,000 to a low in 2008 of 509, and they're a little bit higher in 2012. To some extent, they follow market trends in value and people's perceptions in value. Um, probably you'll notice the fact that the, the blue lines are all the commercial cases filed. And as you can see, they're a lot steadier year by year from 2004 on to 2012. Um, mostly the same people complain each and every year. Um, the, house, the house complaints about move around quite a bit. Moving on to the next chart, this is a chart of the percent of value claimed by property owners to the Board of Assessment Review. Um, as you can see, the blue line represents the values claimed by residential properties. In other words, if they have a $100,000 assessment, they're claiming they're worth $75,000 in 2004. Conversely, the commercial uh, complaints, if they're worth $100,000, they're claiming it's worth $23,000. So if the commercial complaint is uh, right out of the box, as soon as they go to the Board of Assessment Review, make claims that are substantially lower as a percent of their true market value. And they're plotted it over time. Uh, one of the interesting things is the, the claims by the residential values have steadily moved down. They claim less and less. And the claims by the uh, commercial property owners have gone up slightly, which maybe indicates we're making some progress. And um, moving on to the next slide. Next slide is just simply a graph of what percent of complaints to the Board of Assessment Review become court cases. Again, the blue bar represents the residential property owners. The red bar represents the commercial property owners. Um, as you can see, in any given year, a much higher percentage of complaints to the Board of Assessment Review from commercial property owners go on to become court cases. <coughs> Similarly, uh, a much lower percentage of the residential complaints become court cases. But again, one of the interesting phenomena is, is the number of residential court cases is climbing each and every year. And I would attribute that to the function of it becoming more of a commercial enterprise. When we first did revaluation, uh, there were mostly homeowners who brought forth complaints about their assessments. At this point in time, almost 50% of them are brought by commercial firms who are strictly making complaints for the purposes of generating a fee at a later date. So the composition is starting to change, and that's clear in the trends. Um, moving on to the next slide. Uh, this answers the question of why does the town focus on sociaries? It's really simple economics in some respects. The residential court cases, the SCAR cases, are typically resolved before real estate taxes are levied against the property. So when they finally settle, which is typically in the same year as the assessment, there are no tax refunds involved. Um, and it just moves on. A commercial court case, on the other hand, certiorari cases, they're allowed under the law to take up to four years to be resolved. And during this period, the amount of possible school, village, county, and town tax refunds increase each and every year. So this, this is the most important slide on the chart you're going to see tonight. And we, we've tried for three years in a row. And, and, and uh, Mayor Feinstein, thanks so much for coming this evening and want to make you part of this conversation as we do the whole of the community. But we tried for three years in a row to get, uh, to get this for commercial properties. Uh, and, and, and unfortunately, we've been able to pass that legislation. You know, I know both uh, Assemblyman Latimer and uh, State Senator Oppenheimer have been working hard to achieve that, but unfortunately, just haven't been able to do it for whatever reason. But if, if, if we were able to do this, then there would never be any run free funds. You'd be able to manage your 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 your, your villages and your and your schools in a much more efficient fashion. Um, uh, 
so could you just go back a slide? Go back for a couple of slides if you don't mind. Just go, yeah. So I mean, you know, both. You can see the the commercials come in every year, no matter what they come in, and then the residentials and the next one. And, 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 you know, this is egregious. It's 27% of value. So there's going, we're going straight to court. Now, but really what it is, there's 90% of the claims come in at 10, 10 to 15% of value. Then you have actually a couple of real claimants, a couple of bona fide claimants that come in at 75, 80% of value. But most people are gaming the system when they come in. Next. You feel the next slide, please, Mitchell? And that's 92% go to court. Now, this is an interesting phenomenon. What's happened, a lot of lawyers have caught, caught and done this to work on a, a success fee basis. <laughs> the, 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 the big benefit of reval was supposed to be lower tertiary filings. And it happened the first year. And then they figured out, well, we, well, we can still gain the system because we have four years to gain the system. So they, and the lawyers are all working on a success fee basis. They don't care. And so it's no cost to the commercial, so you, you go into a situation where they, they gain the system. Now what's happened in the last few years, you know, people are very taxed, all of a sudden the residential owner, homeowners say, hey, why, why, don't I, why don't I challenge it? And so a number of lawyers have come in and turned this into a mini business. And that's why you've seen this change. What's the next one? But this is the most important slide you're going to see this evening. And I just want to make a point on this slide that the reason the residential cases are resolved is because the, court, the law and the court system requires those cases to be resolved within a year. And the reason the commercial cases don't get resolved is because the court system and the law allows them to go on for multiple years. Okay. Is, is, it, is there any law of rationale, uh, Mr. Nodal, for why it's four years? No. Mm -hmm. well, the, the courts, the courts, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what the history of it is. Okay, if we move on to the next slide, this slide is a, a chart of the value of the settled certiorari cases over the last three and a half years. Um, it's in millions of dollars, and what it represents is how, what were the aggregate assessments in each of the three and a half years represented, what was the aggregate assessments of the properties, and what were the final settlements. And if you just simply go to uh, the last set of bars, which is the total of the last three and a half years, you can see that we've settled townwide aggregate assessments amounting to one billion one hundred and sixty-three million dollars. That's a lot of real estate. Um, we have had to reduce assessments by a total of ninety-five million dollars out of that one billion one hundred and sixty-eight million dollars. So our values have been largely correct, um, but people still make claims. There have been many significant size cases where they have withdrawn as we get close to court. There are others where we find out late in the game that they haven't told us the truth. And that's become a problem in some cases. And we'll start to address that as we run down what are the recommendations in, in going forward. But I think it's important to note that that's a billion more in settlements over three and a half years. That's a significant number. It is a lower number than last year's outstanding balance, but it grows every year as we reduce it. Next slide, please. Um, this shows by year the value of the commercial assessments that are under challenge. As you can see, we have a total still outstanding of $2.4 billion as shown by the last bar, which is the total. But one of the interesting things is while the law requires or mandates that um, the court system resolves these disputes in four years, you can see we have disputes going back to 2004 and amounting to 2003. So the reality is that they do not always get resolved within that four-year window. And in fact, I've had uh, assessment disputes going back into the 1990s before I was ever assessor, before the town of where I ever did revaluation. It gets a little um, odd trying to figure out a value from 15 years ago. And it's challenging. To say the least. Um, going on to the next slide, this is sort of a summary of, you know, what does all of this, these outstanding socialities mean? We have a cumulative assessed value being challenged of $2.4 billion from approximately 225 commercial enterprises. Um, when we look at the, ch the earlier charts, we see that the yearly reductions have ranged from about 1.3% of the assessments to about 9.5% of the assessments. 
Um, if you simply did the math of the $2.4 billion in outstanding court cases and applied the 1.3% and the range of 9.5%, it's potential, it's possible that the town has settlements anywhere from $31 million to $226 million. Uh, the refunds associated with those kinds of uh, settlements could be anywhere from three quarters of a million dollars up to over $5.5 million. And I would just make the point that um, the rates vary by location, by school district, by village. So it's sort of a blend, just to put this you know, in a scale and in the context. So these, these are significant numbers. Any way you know, one looks at it, they amount to something real. Um, the next slide is a little bit of, we've talked about how to reduce the number of complaints. So one of the, one of the more important factors might be to mandate that the commercial property owners submit income and expense data to the town will forfeit their right to challenge the town's assessment. One of the challenges the town faces is very often property owners don't provide us with any information on their particular property until we're practically in front of the judge three or four years later. If we do not have the right information, or if our assumptions are incorrect, or if they don't want to tell us the truth, we don't find out for years, and then we have to make adjustments retroactively to our assessment and refunds result. So it's important that the commercial property owners provide us with the information so we can make a rational, reasoned um, assessment and judgment on their value. That's currently not the way it works. Um, we also suggest that the town be provided with the same legal rights as property owners to expedite certiorari cases. And what that means is, in the court system, the town has very little standing. We have very little ability to, to push a case along, to try and push it to a resolution. All that, that all those powers, all those abilities to move the court case are really determined by the people complaining. But it, now this is important. Now this is really important. And, and, and ultimately, um, if you go back to that other slide, so you have the 2.3 billion, go back, go back. So this is really important. You can go back a slide, right? So that, that 2.4 billion dollars, it's just sitting there. A knife over our heads, this knife over our school children, every day waiting. We have no capacity to bring those cases to court. Zero capacity to bring those cases to court. Is that correct? Can I, uh, yeah. Zero capacity. It's just sitting there. And what happens? And you saw, wait a second, it's four years. Well, 2007, my goodness, that's five years ago. We're just waiting. Waiting until it behooves them. Waiting for the market to turn down. You know, it's, it's crazy, it's insanity. The, 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 the municipalities and the schools, the schools in particular, the villages, are at a ginormous disadvantage. We have no capacity to change that. Sorry. Do you have the forward down a so, um, A third point that we've uh, tried to address in terms of state legislation is to provide towns like the town of Rye, who maintain their assessments at 100% of market value, with the same protections that non-revalued communities get after a court settlement. The way the law currently works is a non-revaluation community who enters into a settlement, a court-approved court settlement with a property owner. Uh, the assessments are frozen for three years. The property owner has no ability under the, the law to uh, file with the Board of Assessment Review or file certiorari for three years. In towns like Rye, Pelham, and other towns in the state of New York, if they maintain values at 100% of market value, were subject to lawsuits the year following the settlement. We had a case this year, remember, our famous case this year, Mr. Nona, right? <laughs> Where the guy, we were approving the settlement, and the same day he was filing a uh, new challenge is substantially below, which fortunately we had not withdraw. So we really need help from the state of New York and the right, state of New York. We're going to find our own solutions. We've got our, our chief counsels here, and they're going to come with some wonderful suggestions, I'm certain. We're, let's keep going. But I, we're going to have a nice conversation here tonight. Okay. The, the uh, last slide is sort of uh, my analysis of, of what's happened town-wide to taxes, uh, what's happened to the property owners, and, and really what it shows is, you know, the burden imposed upon the taxpayers within the town over time. To start with 2004, what that says is that in 2004, when we first did revaluation, taxpayers were, were paying aggregate taxes in that school, village, town, county, based upon their value at about a 2% of value level, which means if you had a $100,000 valued property, you were paying 1,999 taxes, annual taxes, 
to all the jurisdictions based upon that value. In 2011, the burden is increased to 2.76%, which means if you have that same value of $100,000, your taxes on that same valued property would be $2,760. Yeah, so now, do you, do you let's, let's just take a look at this. Now, now do you understand why this is so important? At the end of the day, so 10 years, uh, you've paid 27% of the value of your home just for the right to live in this community. 27% of the value of your home. Now, in a declining home value market, the, the whole basis, the whole rationale for home ownership could very well be undermined. I would just make one more point about this chart. Assessments peaked in 2007. If you look at that chart, 2007, um, the, the trend line had started to go down. As the assessments started to decline, the trend line, the amount of, of taxes one paid based upon their value started to increase. And I will say to you, I plotted a different way, and what it shows clearly is that the assessments peaked in 2007 and declined, but the total amount of taxes paid townwide to all jurisdictions went up in absolute dollars each and every year. Except for the ten of right. <laughs> Precisely. Um, so I guess I would entertain questions at this That's point. That's it? That's it. Well, I just wanted to invite uh, well, a very brief discussion by Mayor Feinstein and uh, Mr. Vitti and Mr. Bender to come on up to the mic and uh, Mr. Novo. Um, you know, because I think that the, the, the bottom line is we tried three years in a row to generate legislation. I, I think that we, we need to come up with a strategy here in the town uh, that, that's going to facilitate things. One of the things that uh, you didn't put up there, Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Mark, which was um, the fact that um, you can't defend property values. Uh, is that correct? But my understanding is Mr. Marquis can't defend property values as a town assessor. Yeah. So all that does is increase cost to the town and the taxpayer. Uh, and, and ultimately, uh, what I'd like to do is have our lawyers formed into a task force to figure out you know, how we're going to get you know, these problems solved. Um, ultimately, the town has put at a horrific disadvantage and as I said, you have a knife hanging over your head. Your property taxes only go up, and, and, and ultimately your capacity to defend values is, is only goes down. So I, I guess we can just say, one alternative is to say, oh my goodness, the system is broken, we can't do anything about it. Or another thing is to say, you know what, we're going to really work hard to provide solutions. And so I, I really like to do this form a committee of uh, Mr. Vitagliano, Mr. Bender, yourself, Paul, uh, Mr. Markowitz to come up with a, a range of suggestions on how we can more efficiently fight these, 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 these challenges. I mean, we've done a good job on an ad basis, but I think all of our conversations we've had behind closed doors, we need to find a more systematic way to, to, to fight these challenges rather than do it on an ad hoc basis. Well, I, if I may, uh, I, I, I agree, and I think that there's a couple of things that we need to uh, place in its proper perspective, and that's that the, the process is governed by the real property tax law, so it's, it's governed by a state law. And as long as governments have the power to assess property, homeowners, property owners will have the power to challenge those assessments. I mean, that's a very fundamental part of living in a free country, in a free society in which we give the government the power to tax us, we give the government the power to assess us, and therefore we as individuals have the right to challenge that. So when you have a process like that, you have to understand that there's going to be a, a system in place that tries to adjudicate those disagreements. The problem is that the system has gotten so out of hand that it, literally the deck is stacked against the municipalities. But part of the problem, Supervisor, which is really within your bailiwick, is that there hasn't been a concerted effort by the towns in this state or even in this county to change these laws. Ironically, as we have gone through, as you know, three years, we have gone to Albany and we have fought this battle, we have received zero support from any other town in this county. So part of the problem we have is building a constituency for change. You have made this an issue. We have addressed the issue as best we can. But, but the political reality is we're not getting a lot of help from your fellow supervisors. And there's a, there's a couple of reasons for that. 
your um, hour a discussion about this four years and, and bringing these things to a head, not a lot of towns agree with that. And, and the reason being that they're just as happy to wait for five, six, seven years because they're literally kicking the can down the road and they're not dealing with it. So, so if, if you're a town supervisor and you have a, a four-year term, the likelihood is a lot of these cases aren't going to come up during your term and you're going to leave it for the next guy. So um, there is not a lot of support, candidly, for accelerating these notes of issues to get these cases up the front. Um, you are unique. I mean, I have to admit, you, know, you, are, you are a different breed of politician, um, and, and that's why I think you've been so vocal about this. And I, I understand where you're coming from because you want to get this thing out in front and resolve it quickly and then move on to the next issue. The other problem is for us, we're, we're a rebound community, and we're only one of, what, three or four now in, this, in the entire county. Uh, town of Maranek is now going through a reval. Um, and so I think a lot of communities are going to reval, uh, but there isn't a whole lot of benefit to going to reval, as we've learned the hard way here in Rhine. So what, to, to understand that part of it is to, is to how you have to appreciate the fact that the court system is not designed to help the municipalities. It, it is designed, quite frankly, for the property owners to come in and you're correct, there is a, there is a cert bar uh, in the legal profession who, who specialize in this. Um, it's, a, it's a very civilized bar, uh, unlike some other bars, like the matrimonial bar or some of the other ones. Um, and they are good, and they understand the system well, and they, they move these cases along, and it is, for the most part, on a, on a commission. And that, you know, if you reduce someone's assessment, uh, you will get a percentage of that reduction as your fee. Now, in some of these commercials, that can be significant because you were talking in the you know, news. So um, that we're not going to change, that, that I can assure you, because the lawyers who uh, are so active politically and have so much influence in Albany would make sure that that didn't change. And that's part of the problem in getting legislation. Um, we went, again, went through this process. We have went to Albany, and we had an original proposal that we worked with ORPS, uh, OOPS, which is the, the Office of Real Property in, in the state that certifies our role. We had ORPS work with us to develop legislation. ORPS would not even endorse the bill. And this is how ridiculous this process is. ORPS, who we sat with and begged for assistance and, and even helped us draft the bill, refused to take a position on the legislation. After we explained to them, in fact, after you said, that you would go call every, write to every town supervisor in the state and tell them not to do eval because of the inequity in the system, they still didn't help us. So we have some real obstacles in terms of the, of the uh, inertia and the history here and the fact that this government doesn't like to do anything. Locally, we have done, I think we've made great strides uh, for a lot of reasons. One, um, you know, uh, I have very excellent attorneys doing this, uh, Aldo and Jeff and Mark, have done an excellent job of aggressively defending the will. We've had some high profile and some significant exposure. You know, the signature air case the, the, is, is a big one uh, that we're facing, and, that, and we've had some other big ones, and we, we've also resolved them. Now, one of the priorities here is that we, we, we endeavor to do this without having to hire an appraiser because that's a significant expense to the taxpayer. So we have this year, I think, probably it's one of our lowest years in terms of spending money on appraisal. In fact, I don't think we've approved an appraisal uh, in 2012. One. One. Okay, one. And now it's September. So that's pretty remarkable. Uh, and a lot of that is due to the, the obstinance of the town. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it is a policy and it's worked for the town. The other issue is, as Mitchell pointed out, getting the right information. We, we are very much dependent on a, on a cooperative relationship with property owners, and we do require, we, we enacted a law our first year uh, requiring uh, income and expense statements. And that means that everybody, uh, commercial property, has to file with us an I need. Now, the problem is, if they don't file the I need, there is no penalty. And we initially, in our at first uh, state legislation, we asked the state to uh, permit us to penalize property owners who don't file an INE by, by essentially forbidding them from filing a cert. The state said, no, can't do that. So our INE law, while it's a wonderful law, it doesn't have the teeth that it needs. And that's one thing we really need to change. The second thing is, as you pointed out, permitting us, if, if we choose to accelerate a case, 
permitting us to do that after one year, which, which was in the law that we did have and that passed the assembly. The third item was well, it passed the Senate, but didn't pass the it did, it, Not only did it pass the Senate, it didn't get introduced, to the, it didn't get to the Senate floor. Right. By Senator Rappan. The third one, as Mitchell pointed out, is that uh, for communities that don't have reval, if you settle a case, you're a homeowner and you settle a case, you're, you're, for, you're forbidden for three years from filing a new, a new challenge. If you're a reval community, that doesn't apply, and it should because we go through this whole process of, of settling the case and then we can't do it. So one of the suggestions, and I, I'll credit Aldo with this, was to be more aggressive at the bar level, is when they file the bar challenge, to bring them in and say to them, okay, what, what's, your, what's your data? What's your basis for this challenge? And see if we can do address we it at the that? bar level. I don't know if we did it this do year. we try to do that we, this we, year? Something we thought we, we talked about, and I think we should do it. I think it was a good suggestion that, that Aldo had. Uh, because then at least we're, we're, well, we're going to get them early on and get them earlier in the process and get them on the table well and I say, you know, this has to get done. And why? what's your what's your basis for challenging our, our role? What, 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 give us the numbers. And that gives Mitchell an opportunity to defend it right there and have a, have a meeting. So that I think we need to institute, and I think we should do it at the next opportunity. Uh, the other thing, as, as you've talked about, and, I, and uh, under the rules of the court, the assessor is the defendant in these cases. So from a, what we call a prima facie basis, he's saying the value is a is million dollars. And there's a presumption that that's correct, and the, the burden, of course, falls on the challenger to why it's not. But his opinion as the defendant is not enough. It's not objective enough to, to be considered evidence in a case. And as you know from the memos you've received from various counsel, that we would we could not have Mitchell just testify, it would not be sufficient. We would lose the case. You have to, sit, we exchange appraisals, and the court makes a decision based on the appraisals. But these appraisals are objective, they're independent, they're third party. So M Mitchell saying, I think it's a million dollars, and giving his opinion is not enough to carry the day. So that is well, the, part of the, that's part of the legal system. It's, it's part of the insanity, though. I mean, well, it's, it's, it's his, 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 his opinion carries the day if it's not challenged, right? And uh, anyway, Correct. Uh, if they don't challenge it and there's a presumption it's that it's correct, it's correct. So it has, it has legal force. Right. But if I think he's wrong yep. and I own property and I get my own appraiser who comes in and, and explains why they believe he's uh, the wrong. The system is designed by lawyers yeah. very clearly to keep lawyers at work. <laughs> and no, I'm sorry. There's no doubt about it. I, 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 I'm not I – I, that's a little cynical. I, I do think <laughs> that there is a reason that people have the, the right to challenge assessments. And I oh think no, well, let me let you finish. It's an important part of the process. We've got a lot of people here uh, tonight, yeah. so I don't want to. So, but uh, what I would like to do is let Aldo and Jeff come up and just uh, th these are the gentlemen who are in the trenches. I mean, they're right. literally at the front lines uh, in the courthouse uh, fighting these battles. So I just would uh, ask them to just give a their perspective um, uh, from the trenches, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, answer questions. So how's that? Is that okay? Yep, perfect, okay. great. We'll start with Aldo. Let's see. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, uh, Town Attorney Nono. Good evening. Um, I've been special counsel for Bright Town uh, for several years. Um, we've tried to take an aggressive approach with these cases. We've tried to identify um, the cases that are most problematic for the town. We've looked for opportunities, uh, non-traditional opportunities for resolution. Um, the biggest challenge that we see is that we're, we're swimming in waters where the deck is stacked against us to a certain extent. A lot of communities enjoy the fact that they, uh, uh, when they give refunds, they don't have to give interest on it, okay? So in essence, they're taking an interest-free loan uh, from corporations, and when they finally pay it back, they pay it back without interest. So you have a lot of communities who are not as aggressive, and they like it when the cases go four, five, six years. Uh, the court rules... Can you uh, just explain that, though, because... They only don't pay interest if they settle, right? They don't pay interest if at the time when they have to settle or do settle, uh, they pay the refund within 60 days. So from the 60 days of the court order, they, they, they negotiate a settlement, they sit on it, they delay it, they lose it in the mail, yeah, but they do whatever, they they and then the order gets signed and it gets served on the controller's office, the controller has 60 days but to pay and, and without interest. Just to be clear, make sure if I understand correctly, if the town or municipality decides to challenge and go to court and try the case, 
if they lose, then the interest payment is automatic. Is that correct? That would be correct if you go all the way and lose so on the you map. Have, so there's the, again, this is just so the people at home understand. Part of the card stacked against any municipality. We, we know we're right. We know our, we're right on our valuations. What happens is we're forced to settle because we run the it co it basically it costs us in some cases less to settle than to try the case. And so, you know, but, but it's just not right. And, and, and by the way, the big losers are the other commercial properties. The other commercial properties are the big losers because we have homesteads. So you're basically paying a disproportionate share because some guy is gaming the system. But I just wanted to be clear, these other s municipalities that are benefiting, they're not really benefiting. They're, 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 they're what's happening is they're, they're just, they're, get, they're participating in the gaming of the system. They're not benefiting. They're basically, what you're saying, they're using it. Come on, they can borrow, you can borrow interest rates today. It's one and a half percent. The, 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 the interest-free loan is, 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 is a reduction in the tax revenue that, that ultimately debilitates the schools and the, and the villages. Yeah. So just to uh, add one other point of information, what Mr. Toto said, uh, the court rules say you cannot file uh, a uh, commercial case for trial until you have at least two years of grievances uh, perfected. So... By the time you hit four years, you have to make sure your paperwork is in, but you can't even put it on the calendar for two years, which is why some of these cases, when they get close to the four years, they file their paperwork, and then it takes two, three, four, five years to settle uh, beyond that. Uh, on it. So it is a very difficult system that, that we work in. It also costs money to defend these cases uh, on it, and what we've looked at is ways to be more aggressive uh, for it. But it's resources, and you have to be prepared to, to commit the resources, provided we believe that the commitment of the resources will yield the results. For example, one of the things we had talked about was uh, we should be more aggressive in the bar. We could perhaps televise some meetings or whatever. I went to uh, the town of Ramapo, where they actually have public session. They televise it. But uh, they have a substantial number of uh, commercial filings. I don't know how many what the number is. They can do perhaps one every two minutes, uh, so that's, you know, 30 cases a, uh, uh, an hour, let's say, uh, on it. and if we look at the numbers, we got 250 commercial cases, you're talking eight hours of your bar sitting there, um, and that's just to give every uh, commercial property two minutes to defend uh, on television. So that doesn't necessarily work, that's huge resources uh, for that. So what I think has to be done is we have to try to isolate from within those cases which cases we believe we have the best shot on, which cases are the most egregious, uh, which cases might um, the uh, um, corporate officers be concerned uh, about their uh, community relations um, and how uh, tax surcharge cases can negatively impact the community relations. So if we can isolate some of those cases, um, we create a little bit of visibility. And what, the, what we have done in the past several years is certainly create some visibility within the bar community, let's say, um, within the commercial bar defending these cases uh, for it. They know that uh, they better be careful if they come to Rye Town because they may very well find themselves with their client on the phone saying, what are you doing? What's going on with this case? How come it's not going the way you want it to be? So I think the fact that we provided some information uh, to the town, uh, at the present time there may be filings uh, coming in but there aren't too many cases right now that are being thrown on the calendar uh, for, for uh, trial adjudication. Now, that may just mean they're lying fallow, they're waiting, they're looking for an opportunity, maybe they're waiting for something to happen to Mr. Markowitz, <laughs> okay, <laughs> for it. Uh, uh, but, but uh. The <laughs> well, actually, I, lo uh, Mr. Uh, the, uh, I love your suggestion. Mm -hmm. And if and nothing else comes out of tonight, your suggestion is a fantastic one, which I'd like to have a uh, follow-up. And that is, in, l l let's try and find those cases. We, we talked about a wall of shame. Let's talk about find those cases which are r truly shameful. And let's, let's go through with Mr. Arcaro's help, uh, Mr. Markowitz's help, and, and your help. Let's, 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 I want to begin to weed out that $2.4 billion value at risk number. And I want to, and, and I want to continue to send that same consistent message of aggressive, fighting of shameful approach it, the, again the whole point is if we've got it wrong just you know sit down as you say at the bar and we'll sit down and have a, a, a you know an adult conversation but 
as I say, 90% of the filings come in at 10% of value, so there's no conversation to be had. So, so additional things that can be done, which again tie to resources, is that when a property owner files a complaint in the Board of Assessment Review um, during those proceedings, um, the bar has the authority to deny the reduction based upon failure to provide information. Um, it's not just insufficient, but failure to pi fi file any information. Okay, it's called the willful refusal. If well, was the bar can deny it? The, bo the bar denies most cases, uh, ah. uh, except for those that they grant reductions to. Um, but they typically, I don't want to say typically in terms of numbers, but they have the option uh, of saying there was insufficient evidence to support the value. We're not sure uh, on it, and the case moves forward. They have the opportunity to make a declaration of a willful refusal uh, where the Board of Assessment Review says, you didn't provide anything to us or you didn't provide anything meani meaningful to us. And at that point in time, what happens is that it changes the dynamic a little bit. You give a property owner a willful refusal, they then have to immediately bring in Article 78 to challenge the bar and say, wait a second, we did. We, oh, we gave well some information. Sorry, but now a you're increasing defense costs because you now have to immediately defend those cases, not in the normal trial context, but, but in a question as to whether was there sufficient a, evidence provided at the bar. Right, but this is a wonderful suggestion. How many willful refusals have we, uh, has the bar ever, ever put forward? Um, I can't None, right, yeah, okay. But this is, so this is, part, so this is the whole reason for tonight's meeting. Really, I'm sorry for uh, the interns having to wait and the, f the families and parents, but hopefully you learned something about your tax tax situation tonight. Okay. But that's but that's precisely, and I guarantee you, half of the commercial challenges are willful refusal cases, e easily. And uh, so what we should sit down is, is, is I love your suggestion about anticipating. Uh, and, 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 and I want to find out these what, what cases, we should identify those cases that should have been classified okay. as willful refusal. The challenge that we have is that we can't identify the bar as an independent body. They have to no, identify. No, no, but but we're, we're, we're pointing people to the bar all the time, and this is the first I've but ever they, heard. They have to identify. And, and I, I'm very okay. confident that the bar, uh, you know, it's, and it's a shame we didn't get them here tonight, and we'll have them come in in a future evening. I'm very confident the bar uh, would look along uh, to that proposal favorably and I'm very confident that they have the same disgust disgust with the system that certainly I do and, and so many of us do I don't want to steal Jeff's thunder uh, but one of the suggestions that he and I were talking about before was that the villages can help us out uh, for it and and they can assist us because the way our um, assessment gets done, we do the assessments for the village. And it is a requirement under the law that when somebody files um, the grievances and files the, uh, to perfect the grievances with a full-blown uh, Article 7 proceeding, that notice has to be uh, provided to the villages. And it's very difficult for Mitch's office to first keep track of the filings coming into the town and then have a way of uh, uh, checking with the villages, hey, did you get all these same fil filings? Where did you receive 172 or you know 500 uh, notices that came in? So, if there was a way to develop some kind of a template system or some kind of notification system where the clerks in each community would say, hey, I got these 10 cases in, I got these 30 cases in uh, for it, and we can check and see because if there's a failure to serve, that can be a fatal defect uh, on the uh, filing. And a fatal defect obviously means we win. Uh, on it, it benefits us. But again, you're talking resources, you're talking time, energy, you're talking right. commitment. And and I'd asked, and I don't know if, if information was provided in terms of you know what defense costs were before versus what they are now. I don't know if anybody did the research. You know, in, in terms of that, um, I would believe that we're down from where they were years ago. And that's a good thing for taxpayers. But if we're talking about being more aggressive, then you're talking about increasing the resources, right. strategically increasing the resources. And if we can do it in a way that kind of sends a message or uh, lets people know that uh, there's a more favorable watering hole in another community in the town of Rye, that benefits the taxpayers. That's exactly what I mean. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for your comments. Very helpful. Uh, very helpful. Uh, Mr. Binder? Mr. Supervisor, um, members of the board, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to come. Uh, obviously, I echo everything uh, Aldo has said and, and, and everything that Paul said. Um, we've, we've discussed this at length. 
uh, almost on a weekly basis. So we're all, we're all sort of on the same page. Th there's one point I would like to make which sort of uh, expands on what we were talking about is that we, we should not lose sight that there are multiple stakeholders in this process. There's the